what's the name of this? Oh, it's got to be an ISO. Or no. No, no, no. So how many substitutions? Yeah, how many um, substituents are there here? Oh, so two. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then it's a methyl. So then is it a dimethyl? Because there's two of them. <laughs> okay. Oh, then it's a one dimethyl cyclopentane. Go ahead and write that out. Now, how many substituents are there in this molecule? Two. Okay. What's one of the substituents? One. What, what's one of them? One of them's a methyl group. Oh, well, yeah, sorry. Methyl and where is it? Um, at no one. And where is the other methyl group? Oh, crap. It's a one one. There you go. Darn we it. have to say where both of those substituents go. Why do I keep forgetting that? Again, people feel like they've taken care of that because they said dimethyl, yeah. but that doesn't say where they are. It's like saying, um, uh, it's not good enough to say, uh, I have two friends, and one of them lives in San Francisco. That doesn't tell you where the other friend lives, right? Um, just because, so if you had two friends that lived in San Francisco, you couldn't just say, I have two friends, and one of them lives in San Francisco. People don't know where the other one lives unless you say, and the other one also lives in San Francisco. So that's what we have here. We have two methyl groups. One of them is in the number one location, and the other one is also in the number one location. It's good to compare these two examples. Notice how similar these are. Here we have two methyl groups, but they're in different locations. Right. And here we have two methyl groups, but they're in the same location. So we just use the locator uh, for each of those. I need okay. to remember the locator. Yeah. Okay. So we just need a locator for each substituent. All right. So 1,1-dimethyl cyclopentane. What would be the name of this? So yeah, so here we have uh, five carbons in the main chain. So you called that cyclopentane. And here we have four carbons in the substituent, so that's butyl. But this is a branched substituent. So we have to go back over our names for branched substituents. Um, well, we saw some branched substituents branch at the end and some branch at the beginning. Um, if they branch at the end, we use the iso term. But this is branching at the beginning. Oh, that's the beginning? Isn't this the beginning of, because this is where it's directly connected to the ring. Oh. So, um, and how many carbons is this connected to in the substituent? Two. So that would be sec butyl. Oh. So we could call this one sec butyl cyclopentane. Okay.
this would be isobutyl. Okay. So maybe it's good to have in one piece of uh, place in your paper the difference between isobutyl and secbutyl. Isobutyl is when the end of the chain is splitting into two methyl groups. So this would be isobutyl, and this is secbutyl. Miscounted the number or misremembered. So there's three carbons here. What's the name for three carbons? Oh, just kidding. So men eat pickles. The third in the, um, the line is prop. All right, now the first thing we have to do here is number. But theoretically, there's two different ways we could number. You could number like this, or you could number like this. These would both give us numbers of one and two in both cases. So there's no way to choose between these based on the lowest possible numbers. So the next way to choose is um, if, I, if there's a tie based on the different types of numbering systems, we want to give the lower number to what would come first in alphabetical order. So what, what types of substituents do we have here? So who should get the lower number, the ethyl or the propyl? to ethyl, because it comes first in alphabetical order. So this would be the superior naming system, because this gives the first number to the thing that comes first in alphabetical order. Now, notice we only use the alphabetical order when there's a tie in the numbering. If, there's another, if we don't need, need the alphabetical ordering if there wasn't that tie in the numbering. You know, we didn't actually do um, molecules with two substituents uh, before. That didn't come up yet until we got to the ring. So here we've got one ethyl, two propyl, cyclopentane. So I think you might have tried putting both the numbers at the start. Yeah. But if you do that, it's hard to tell who, which number corresponds to which substituent. So well, we hadn't talked about having multiple substituents before, but when there's multiple substituents, you put the number in front of the substituent, separated by dashes. We only use commas to separate numbers. So this would be 1-ethyl-2-propyl-cyclopentane. 